guys welcome back to my channel and today's video i will be talking about the differences and interesting facts between tibetan culture and sherpa culture so before i begin my video i want to give you guys more of an introduction of who i am so you guys can get to know me better throughout these videos so a little bit about me. I came in the United States when I was eight years old. Ever since then, I've been here. I went back home to Nepal, I think back in 2015, back around when Trump and Hillary were going back and forth in their debates. So that's when I went back. And I went back because my granddad had passed away and I wanted to salute and pay homage to his beautiful soul. So who am I essentially? I am half Tibetan, half Sherpa. So my dad is Sherpa and my mom is Tibetan. And obviously when I was young, I was more influenced by my dad because I grew up with him more. So I associated myself more as a Sherpa. But after I came to America <clears throat> and stayed with my mom, now I associate myself more towards Tibetan. <clears throat> so in that regards, I would say I've had a completely different upbringing than a normal Tibetan or a Sherpa would because I've had it from both perspectives. <clears throat> so one thing I noticed was the Tibetan household, it's more, I would say it's more prideful of um, of their culture and preserving their traditions. And I would say Sherpa is different in that it's not preserving the language, preserving the mother country. It's more about preserving the olden traditions, what's been passed from generations and generations and generations. And also in Sherpa, the passing on the lineages, like it's, it's almost like an aristocratic tradition. You pass on the last name of the, let's say, the dads, 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 all of their last names would be passed on. If their last name is Sherpa, then their kids would be called something, something Sherpa. If they're the Lama Sherpas, which I'm part of, then their last names would all end in Lama. It's not saying that they're ordained Lamas, but what that is, is someone in their family, like higher, like long, long, long time ago, must have been a prominent figure, prominent Lama. So in my case, my granddad was a high Lama, and his whole family had a lineages of not only being Lama, but also a prominent figure in Nepal, in primarily in the area of Solo Kumbu. So the most interesting facts about Sherpa are that all the women in Sherpa community, the way you differentiate themselves from Tibetans would be that they would wear comfortable shoes with the Tibetan attire, which are the chubas and all that. So if you ever walk around Jackson Heights and you see someone with a New Balance or Skechers, they're Sherpa. However, to differentiate Sherpa men from Tibetan men, I mean, obviously, the one thing that gives away is their tone, their their dialect, their they speak totally different languages. Sherpa have their own languages. So older Sherpas would have their own language. The younger Sherpas, uh, if they don't speak their mother tongue, then it's really hard to tell because we all look alike. Like legit, you can't tell the difference between a Sherpa and a Tibetan if they all speak English and they all wear the same clothes. It's hard. But... The key differences are that Sherpas, like, they can also be from India, they can also be from different parts, but if there are Sherpas from Nepal, they're more, I would, I would say people in Nepal, they're more, like, I don't want to get some hate comments now, more calmer, and this is not biased because I'm from there, it's more like, it's an observation. I just feel like Sherpas, oh, I just feel like people in Nepal generally, they're, they're just more calmer. I think it's because of the weather, it's because of the, the environment. The culture of just leisure lifestyle, they don't do anything. They just drink tea and they just spend the time sitting on the bench and, and that's it. So this is, that's, that's, it's not a 
I hate on you know people from India. It's more like it's just it's just an observation. But the Tibetans, you can differentiate them. Would be first, they wouldn't wear Tibetan women. They wouldn't wear sneakers with Tibetan outfit. What they would wear is more like a, what they would wear when they go out and eat. You know, like more like a high heels and all that. Uh, Shabam, because they want they want to. I would say make the Tibetan outfit more presentable, more and be more um, luxurious feel to it. Because it's once in a year they just they don't wear it every day of their life like Sherpa women would. They would wear it only once, or like if it's a family function and it's, it's more traditional and cultural, then they would wear it. Even then, they would really wear high heels to make it look presentable. So. That's a key fact if you really want to find the differences between a Sherpa and a Tibetan. That's the fastest way to differentiate. Next would be Tibetan men versus Sherpa men. That's hard because if they speak Hindi, obviously they're Tibetan. But if they speak Nepali, obviously they're uh, from Nepal. However, you might not know, lots of lots of Tibetans from India do speak Nepali. The reason why that's the case is because they are literally at the border of Nepal and that. And those would be people of Darjeeling, West Bengal. So they're regionally, they're from India, but they, they speak Nepali. So I was confused when I saw someone who said they're from India and they're, they're Tibetan, but they're speaking like a normal Nepali would. They're like, that's... That's the dialect, that's the tone that I grew up with. What? You're from what? You're Tibetan? What? Because growing up, all the Tibetans only spoke Hindi or Tibetan. There was no Nepali or anything. It was foreign to them to, you know, someone with my, you know, face to be speaking something other than Hindi or Tibetan. So <laughs> vice versa. So when I saw someone with my kind of face speaking Nepali and I know that they're from India, but like, whoa, really? What? You know, that was a eye opener for me. For a long time, I thought Darjeeling was like an, an extension of Nepal, essentially, because they all speak Nepali, ironically. Yeah. Also, another key fact for you guys is that because I'm from Sherpa um, and Tibetan family, Sherpas will usually. If they're from an um, upper class family, they would pass down their last names, more like an aristocratic old Tibetan traditions. So I'm from uh, a Lama Sherpa family. So <laughs> if, I'm from the, if I'm back home, I would have, you know, say Namgya Lama because Lama would be, that would, that's how they would know, you know, um, what Sherpa I belong to. I wouldn't know, but they would know. They One thing that I wanted to uh, mention was just because we're Tibetan, Sherpa, or mix, don't feel like, oh man, there's something else, you know, that's them, that's not me, you know, Sherpa, you know, that's totally different. Let's just come and unite as a community because we're all Buddhist at the end of the day. We all worship the same culture, same traditions that's been passed from literally from Tibet. If you had done one of these uh, DNA tests, we'll be all traced back to Tibet. So it's, let, let's just let go of all of these uh, nonsense that oh, I'm from Nepal, I'm from Tibet, I'm from Bhutan, or somewhere else. We're all the same. Come on, let's come together, right? And, uh, and unite. I know there is a Sherpa Kiduk and Sherpa Gumba in Jacksonites. I'm a member of it, but I'm also a good friend and uh, associate of the owner of New York Tibetan Service Center, Ikila. So because I'm, <laughs> I'm at both places, I kind of like overlap with both um, communities and it's quite fascinating. So I would like for you guys also to let go of all of these barriers that we have and preconceptions and judgments and let us come as a community let us grow and get become more i guess wholesome more prosperous more engaging let's help one another out you know if you have a kid that goes to some 
Ivy League, help another person in our own community, guide them through it, and they can also reap the benefits of your knowledge, your wisdom that you know that you have. Because we all keep all of our secrets to ourselves. Like, let's be honest. Just because someone is doing so well, it's, it doesn't really, you know, it's not satisfying. I like my whole community to do well and be at a equal footing with the communities that we are living with. You know, the Jewish community, the Italian community. You can list all of them. But Tibetan, Himalayan community, Nepali community, Sherpa community, it's small. Bhutanese community, sorry, I should have put that as well. We're small. We're really small. If you look at our countries, it's really small, right? It's so it's, and we all fled our country for better or worse for what better opportunities. So why don't we just come as a community in a new country essentially and grow together? That's why I created this YouTube channel. It's not to, you know, put out some nonsense contents. It's more of a personal finance help do it yourself type of content that I'm creating here. So you guys can take those and then run with it and also, you know, do well for yourself and your family. That's my end goal of this YouTube channel to help everyone else. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And please put them in the comments below. I want to have a discourse with you guys. Am I right to have the opinion that we should all come together as a community, the whole Himalayan community? Or should we still be more exclusive, reserved, keep all the trade secrets to ourselves? You, you be the judge of that. Then put that in the comments down below. Let me know. Cheers.